Hey Kaiju fans, Tatiana Lanta here, and today we are shedding light at inconsistent Kaiju stats. The primary focus of this video is exposing the conflicting numbers given for monstrous attributes in official sources, as opposed to on-screen scaling discrepancies such as Titanosaurus changing into the size of a mountain, or Gigan and Ghidorah suddenly becoming considerably smaller than the Godzilla Tower as they encircle it. Nor are we talking about how in Destroy All Monsters, Gorosaurus is apparently 35 meters even though he's the same size as the 50 meter Godzilla. With that said, let's dive straight into the first creature on our list. Okay, this is pretty much just a joke, but these two books say that the giant lizard's length is unspecified, meanwhile this one says it's 1 meter. Okay, for real now. <laughs> to make things clear from the get-go, the Varen in the 1958 Varen the Unbelievable, and the Varen in the 1968 Destroy All Monsters are separate. They kind of have to be, considering the original Varen blatantly dies at the end of the movie. Anyways, the 1958 Varen is without any doubt 50 meters tall and 15,000 metric tons. You got that so far? Well here's where it gets weird. If you look at pretty much any and all Godzilla media that lists monster stats, the Destroy All Monsters Varen will be listed as being 50 meters and 15,000 metric tons. The same as the original Varen. However, books released near the time of Destroy All Monsters, such as this Asahi Sonorama book, as well as this book from 1993, gave the 68 Varen different stats than the original 58 Varen. A 10 meter height and a slightly obese, the encyclopedia's words, not mine, 60 metric ton weight. So what the heck is going on here? First we need to explain Varen's appearance in Destroy All Monsters. Originally, the script called for Varen to participate in the final fight against King Ghidorah. However, the Varen suit was in very bad condition by that point, and only a 90 centimeter prop could be used. To reconcile this, some promo materials explain that the Monsterland Varen was a juvenile. Still, how exactly does this explain most books retconning his size to being 50 meters? There's nothing concrete for sure, but one hypothesis is that Toho completely forgot that the damn Varen had different stats from the original Varen in the first place. And whenever companies requested kaiju stats, Toho only gave them the 58 Varen stats, which they had readily available. So the clearly very small 1968 Varen was said to be the same size as Godzilla, because Toho's staff forgot about the 10 meter juvenile explanation. Oh, and this book randomly says that the second Varen is 30 meters tall, while this book says the original Varen weighs 25,000 tons for no reason. We can safely ignore these one-offs, though, and treat these as Varen's official stats. While the Showa 1998 and 2001 King Ghidorah stats are reliably unvariable, the Heisei King Ghidorah, not as much. The heights for the Heisei King Ghidorah and Mecha King Ghidorah are listed as either 140 or 150 meters. The majority of sources we have available from 1993 and onward say that the Heisei KG is 140 meters tall and has a wingspan of 150 meters. Though two contemporary books released right after Godzilla vs King Ghidorah we have say that they are 150 meters in height. In addition to another 1995 book and the 1998 The Official Godzilla Compendium, which says that the King Ghidorah's wingspan is 175 meters as well. Which is correct? I would have said 150 height and 175 wingspan if I hadn't found out about the January 1992 Godzilla vs King Ghidorah Battle History manga collection saying that Ghidorah and his cyborg form are 140 meters tall. And to add to the beauty, it turns out, three of the four books that give KG the 150 meter stature also go ahead and give Mecha King Ghidorah a 70,000 metric ton weight, the same weight as the non Mecha Ghidorah. Meanwhile, MKG is overwhelmingly said to weigh 10,000 more tons than his biological form, including in the official Godzilla compendium and the manga collection. So, not even sources released immediately after Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah agree? What are they thinking? Which are the true stats? We'll just go ahead and see that they're this, just because these are the most widely published and contemporary source system to be completely unreliable. Still, this mess is nothing when compared to... Oh boy, the Showa Mothras. The whole thing is confusing to the point of it being impossible to keep up with unless it's laid out on a chart, which I created it right here, and you can check out for yourself in the description. So as you can see, literally none of the Mothra incarnations have any attributes that are kept the exact same from source to source, except for the wingspan of the 1961 Imago, which is said to be 250 meters every single time. 
Since a lot of the time, the 135 meter wingspan is attributed to the Imago Mothras in the Godzilla films, it seems apparent that Mothra was made to have shrunk in size between the 1961 Mothra and Mothra vs. Godzilla. However, a lack of specificity on this, and a lack of specification on the later Mothra larvae being 53 or 40 meters, created a gigantic mess which spiraled out of control into this. Perhaps the most ridiculous thing in this whole chart is one book stating that the third generation Mothra is, quote, between 40 and 100 meters, whatever that means. You want to know what's utterly hilarious? The Mothra eggs have more reliable stats than any of the Showa Mothras. The 1961 egg is 100 meters in long diameter and weighs 50 metric tons, and the 1964 egg has a 50 meter diameter and 65 metric ton weight. Isn't that just the saddest thing? Thanks to the Mothra vs. Godzilla manga from May 1964, hope is not completely lost. At the beginning, the manga says that Mothra's wingspan is 250 meters, the larva's length is 180 meters, and even mentions the egg being 100 meters long. All stats consistent with the original Mothra film and not Mothra vs. Godzilla. Hold on, you might say. Doesn't that disprove that the Mothras were scaled down in 1964 since this says that they're the same size? It would seem so superficially, but these numbers begin making sense if you come to the realization that Toho didn't adjust the stats until afterward. This manga was published within only a month after the film's release, after all, and was definitely in production before that. In other words, these stats were the ones the manga creators were given by Toho as they were the only ones available at the time. Whether that means Toho changed them after the manga began production, or even months after the movie came out, is what best lines up with the trends in our chart. That, or there is literally no consistency whatsoever, and it is 100% impossible to tell the true sizes of the Showa Mothras. We favor the former explanation. Baragon is kind of a similar case to Varen, where his size changed between his debut movie and Destroy All Monsters. Again, the Destroy All Monsters Baragon is separate from the 1966 Frankenstein Conquers the World Baragon. The majority of the time, the 68 Baragon is said to be the same height as the 65 Baragon. 25 meters. However, some sources state that the Monsterland Baragon is actually 5 meters shorter, including the same Asahi Sonorama book from 1968 which confirmed that the Monsterland Baron was 10 meters. It seems to have been the intended height for him at the time of the film's release, and was lost to time just like Baron's height. <laughs> While the original King Kong doesn't actually fit the parameters we set for this video, since his problem is on-screen scaling, he is the most important and arguably the most blatant case of this, so we'll go ahead and talk about him here. To begin with, King Kong creator Marion C. Cooper originally imagined Kong as being quote 40 to 50 feet tall, and this is reflected in promotional materials of the movie, where he's said to be 50 feet. However, stop-motion animator for the film Willis O'Brien and his crew made the sets and models so that Kong was way smaller than his original envisioned height, instead appearing to be 18 feet on Skull Island and 24 feet in New York City. However, Cooper still used camera tricks such as changing the camera angles to make Kong's height adjust to whatever feeling he wanted to convey in each scene. Kong's size ranged from 18 to 60 feet across the stop-motion segments, and Mr. Cooper justified it by saying that he, quote, felt confident that if the scenes moved with excitement and beauty, the audience would accept any height that fitted into the scene. The one essential thing was to make the audience enthralled with the character of Kong, so that they wouldn't notice or care that he was 18 feet high or 40 feet, just as long as he fitted the mystery and excitement of the scenes and action. On top of this, the giant Kong head used in the movie is on scale with a 40-foot Kong, and the giant hand was on the scale of a 70-foot Kong, meaning that across the original film, the giant ape's height fluctuates from smaller than the Peter Jackson Kong to a bit taller than the 1967 King Kong Escapes incarnation, all the while his official given height is 50 feet. Honestly, this isn't that ludicrous when you remember that Gorosaurus is apparently 35 meters tall in King Kong Escapes, even though he's the same exact size as the 20 meter King Kong. Or wait. Huh. Anyways, thanks for watching. We have a few more inconsistent stats to talk about, so stay tuned for part 2.